Welcome to Listening to Ecstasy. Before you come out of the chemical closet to friends or a family member, consider planning the conversation the way you'd plan a good chemical experience, with careful attention to set and setting. So first, set your mindset, your motivation. You might want to come out to someone to share your excitement about what you've discovered. And while I share your enthusiasm, I've also learned that when I've attempted to do so, uh, to persuade a person to try to do a substance like MDMA, it can often backfire. Just like you and I don't want to be told what to do, neither does anyone else. I've had to learn to check myself about conveying a subtle message of, you need this, or you've got problems and this will fix you. Remember that even though you and I might be coming from our hearts, we could alienate the other person. In terms of setting, first think about who you may wish to share this information with. Be careful. Some people are more judgmental and closed-minded than others. And there are some people you should never talk to. For example, never complete the following sentence. Uh, let me explain, officer. Anything you say can and will be held against you. And please don't come out to your boss. That could get you fired or at the least put her or him in a compromised position. And the same goes with a coworker. Also, as part of the setting for this conversation, I recommend that each of you be sober and make sure you're not going to be interrupted. And please find the courage to speak with this person face to face or else be considered doing this at all. And if you live far away from them, it's better with FaceTime or Skype than a phone. Here are some words you can use. You know I believe in responsible self-exploration. There's a new frontier these days with people using psychedelic drugs for this purpose. And here you can mention the studies being done with MDMA and PTSD. So I've taken some steps in this direction by carefully using certain medicines for self-exploration. You're important to me, and I, I didn't want to keep this from you. At this point, it might be a good idea to tap into the kind of empathy you feel when you've rolled and try to appreciate what it might be like for this person who cares deeply about you to be told that you've been doing a, a powerful and illegal drug. And remember that for most parents, for example, hearing this might be their worst nightmare come true. Be prepared for an intense response as Tim Leary once said of LSD, it's been known to trigger paranoid reactions in those who've never done it. Try to reassure the person that, for example, you're not addicted to something. And if you are, that's a whole different conversation. And you're using these substances with respect for their power. I'm well aware of the risks involved, and I regulate my frequency of use, and I'm very careful about dosage and purity. And be prepared for responses based on ignorance. For example, many people conflate all illegal drugs. So when you reveal you've been rolling, for example, they may conjure up images of crack cocaine or opiate addiction, or they may recall some sensationalist news report they've heard in the past. Does an ecstasy burn spinal fluid, destroy brain cells? Be prepared to correct misconceptions as patiently as you can. And you can point them towards responsible sources of information like maps.org or my website. So what's been your experience? What are your concerns? And check out part two in this series about coming out of the psychedelic closet where I talk more about my own process. Thanks.